What's up guys, my name's Brandon and just as expected, Apple released iOS 16 Beta 3 to registered developers about two weeks after the second beta. And in addition to this iOS release, Apple also dropped the third beta of iPadOS 16, watchOS 9, macOS Ventura, tvOS 16, and HomePodOS 16. But as usual, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update. And you can see it was a pretty large update actually coming from beta 2. It was about 1.53 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That size will vary. It will be much bigger if you're coming from beta 1. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update. Let's go to our settings, general, about you're also going to see the first change in beta 3 right here as well so you can see this screen is different so we have our build number right here so it says 20a 5312g and just for reference here's what that section looked like in beta 1 and 2 it opened up a whole new screen here and it showed about this update it showed ios 16 and the build number much smaller just a big difference in this little section here in our settings general about and then for the modem firmware you can see on the iphone 13 series it is 2.07.00 all right so now what else is new here in ios 16 beta 3 and the first thing is a shortcuts pop-up that i got right once i installed the software so you can see it says one automation are enabled on your iPhone. So a grammar mistake there by Apple. So I'm sure that will be fixed in a future version, but just a minor change to the verbiage for your automations and shortcuts. And then easily the biggest feature in iOS 16 beta three is if we go down to our settings and then to privacy and security, then all the way to the bottom, we have a brand new feature called lockdown mode. And this is going to make a lot of headlines, especially when iOS 16 releases to the public. So you can see here, it says lockdown mode is an extreme optional protection that should only be used if you believe you may be personally targeted by a highly sophisticated cyber attack. Most people are never targeted by attacks of this nature. And it says when iPhone is in lockdown mode, it will not function as it typically does. Apps, websites, and features will be strictly limited for security and some experiences will be completely unavailable. And Apple is calling this feature the first of its kind and it's only meant to be used by those who might be targeted by cyber cyber attacks or spyware like the infamous Pegasus attack. So if you're not a notable character, you probably don't need to worry about this, but it's pretty cool to see Apple introducing said feature. So if you go ahead to learn more, it will take you to a page not found, which is pretty interesting. We are in a beta, but if you go to turn on lockdown mode right here, you could see the details of what this actually does specifically. You know, it says for messages, most messages attachments are blocked and some features are unavailable. So it breaks down each and everything that will be kind of limited or unavailable when you turn on lockdown mode. And if you go to turn it on again, you get another prompt to basically make sure you want to do this. And it doesn't just turn on, you have to reboot your device to turn this on as well. So you get several warnings beforehand obviously because your device is not going to perform as it should now moving on to some more fun things that you guys can actually use if we go ahead to our lock screen here and haptic press and go to customize and tap on our time right there you will see that we have two brand new fonts so here's what it looked like on a beta 2 on the left beta 3 over here on the right so we have the ios 15 style a very thin font for the time up there and then the one below that is also new so two new fonts there for the lock screen also you will notice that the little globe icon here used to be blue it is now black in beta 3. and then also on the lock screen take a look at this you can see i have an event coming up in my calendar but since my phone is not unlocked it doesn't show what that is there's a little like blur right there that covers up what the event title is but when i unlock my phone you can see it appears and shows what that event is and if we head back into our settings and go down to the wallpaper section you will notice a change here as well so the ui has changed once again apple has changed this in every beta so far so we have this new little instruction panel down here that shows you it kind of makes it more clear of how to use the new lock screen in iOS 16 because a lot of people are still confused so it says change your wallpaper from the lock screen and it shows you how to do what I've already shown you how to do in previous videos but you can see right here this section is the same but if we go ahead to customize let's go to let's go to customize right here let's add a new wallpaper and if we go down a little bit to our collections and go all the way over you will see that the clownfish wallpaper has returned in beta 3 so this was the wallpaper for the original iphone it is now in its full quality it's full resolution here in ios 16 very nostalgic 
I love that this was added. And after hearing from people in my Discord server, it seems like not everybody has this wallpaper. So I'm not sure why I have an iPhone 13 series here, but other iPhone 13 series users are not seeing this wallpaper. So hopefully it's added for everybody in the fourth beta or the public beta. So if you don't see it now, don't fret, it's not just you. If we head back into our settings and go to our iCloud section and then go to iCloud and then to photos, you could see that we now have the shared library feature. So this has finally been added here in beta three. If you go ahead and tap on that, you will get a splash screen that says iCloud shared photo library, create a shared library to combine photos and videos with the people closest to you. So this is a big thing that Apple announced and showed at the Worldwide Developers Conference, but it was not available in beta one or beta two. So if you go to start setup, you can see you can add your participants right here. So if you wanted to add people later, you could also do that. And you can move photos to the shared library. So you have all my photos and videos, choose by people or date, or just choose manually. I'm going to add these two photos. Let's go to add. And then you can see we have a preview. So we can preview the shared library or skip and continue. So I will preview this just so you guys can see how it looks. And we have this right here that says share from camera. So add photos and videos directly to your shared library with the library button. So we now have a button where you could do that automatically or share manually only. So I imagine most people will do this manually. So I will select that and now it is done. So let me go into my camera and see if that's there. So yeah, up top now you can see it showed personal library there for a minute. So we now have a new toggle up here and the top left for shared library. So that is brand new here in beta three and at the camera application, it will tell you right there if it's shared or personal. And then heading into the accessibility section, if we go down to the live captions, you will see that we have a new glyph icon there compared to betas one and two. You can see iOS 16 beta two on the left, beta three on the right. And then if we head into the live captions section, you can see a minor change to the verbiage down here under in-app live captions. And if we go into our appearance, we now have both old text that was not there before. And then also the idle opacity. So we can now change the opacity of live captions when it's in idle. Also background color, you can see that is a different color there than it was in beta two, the preview at least. And then if you enable live captions, you can see a change to the UI. So before it said waiting, now it says listening. Also, we have these three dots over here on the right, whereas we didn't have anything on previous betas. If we head over to our Safari settings and go down to the tabs section, you can see a minor change to the tab bar glyph icon right there. So before it would just have the blue for the tab bar, but now it has a blue outline around the phone along with a less opaque little blue around the tab bar at the bottom. So you can see just a minor change to the glyph icon right there for both the single tab and the tab bar. And if we head into our wallet and Apple Pay settings, you can see we have a new option here for online payments and it says use Apple Pay when available. So that was not there in previous betas, but it is now a toggle in beta three. And this feature is going to allow you to hide your real card number when shopping online. So thanks to 9to5Mac who found this in the code, they say Apple has been working on a new system to integrate virtual cards with Safari in order to improve security when shopping online. And then they reference this toggle and the code of basically how it's going to work. So that is a nice new option to have here as well. And then in iPadOS 16, we have a new splash screen for stage manager right here to show you basically how to use that. And if you go into another window here, so if we go into, let's just say we want to go into our notes window right here, if you tap on the three dots, you can see that we have a new menu up there. So before it was a little small horizontal menu that just had the glyph icons, but now we have text to go along with it. So it says zoom, add another window, minimize, and also close. So that is new in beta three. And then for watchOS 9 beta three, the AFib history feature is now available for the series four and newer. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, if you go into the music application and download a single or an album, you can see the icon up in the top right hand corner will just show blank after it finishes downloading. So it won't show the check mark unless you go out of it and then back into it. So that's been a bug for a while. It's still here in beta three. Also the really annoying drop shadow on the icons with a light colored wallpaper is still there. And the weather application is also still very off here in beta three. So for whatever reason, it's still like two to three degrees off from previous versions and way off from iOS 15. So still not sure what's going on with weather. And if we take a look at the release notes, you can see there are quite a few known issues in beta three, but this update did also fix a lot of bugs from betas one and two. And a few that I just wanted to mention are that wireless CarPlay might fail to connect 
We also have an issue in messages and Apple says when attempting to reply to an existing thread of replies, the replies might scroll to an incorrect position. And we have quite a few mail bugs. So you can see under known issues, there are a ton of issues listed under mail. Some of them have a workaround, some of them do not. So if you wanna see the nitty gritty of all of these known issues and resolved issues, I will leave a link to the release notes down in the description below. Now moving on to the performance and the battery life. So first off, performance actually seems a little bit better than beta two so far. So I've only been using this for a few hours, but so far the performance seems a little bit better than it was in beta two. So I did run a Geekbench score and both scores were high Higher than beta 2 so we got a 1741 and a 4809 and if we take a look at the history right here you can see the beta 2 scores right here compared to the beta 3 scores right above so higher on the single core and much higher on the multi-core and when it comes to the battery life battery life you know it's too early to tell just yet but i've been doing this whole video and i only lost a couple percent i think i was at 95 percent when i started this video so that tells me that battery life is also going to be improved here compared to betas one and two and that would make sense since this beta is most likely going to be the same build that we're going to see for the public beta so i would expect better performance and especially better battery life here with beta three. So if you did have battery drain on beta two, that could very well be resolved here with this third beta. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if your battery life has improved. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next. So next up is going to be the public beta of iOS 16. And like I mentioned, this will be the same build as the developer beta three. So we just got it early if you are on the developer program, but public beta, which is going to be free for everybody, should come out next week the week of the 11th i say any time from the 11th through the 13th is most likely now there is a very slim chance of seeing that on the 7th or the 8th but i think apple is going to wait until next week to release that first public beta and then the following week is when we will see ios 15 developer beta 4. and then as far as ios 15.6 goes i would expect the final release very soon so the m2 macbook air releases on the 15th which means that we should see these updates come out before then so we could actually see a 15.6 rc as early as the 7th or the 8th or we could see it on monday the 11th with a public release later on that week before the m2 macbook air comes out and the very latest i could see ios 15.6 getting released is the week of the 18th i don't think it's going to come anytime after that but yeah guys there you have it that is ios 16 developer beta 3 be on the lookout for my ios 16 public beta coverage coming very soon i will show you guys how to install that and of course cover more new features and changes in ios 16 in the coming days and weeks so if you guys enjoyed this video if you appreciate me covering all these new features i would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 16 coverage coming in the coming weeks and months but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon Thank you.